Jay Linesider here. Today I'm going to discuss one of my favorite ways to fish for snook and that's using flare hawks. As you can see this one was caught on a flare hawk. All right in all seriousness um, before we get into the flare hawk discussion I want to um, refer you to some of my other videos that also coincide with this one and help you understand how to catch uh, snook on the flare hawks. If you go to my channel you'll see something called Jay's instructional videos as a playlist and on there you're going to see the um, mullet run uh, 2023 and bridge shadow lines that's a very important video also I have trolling for snook um, as one of my instructional videos and then last but not least the bridge fishing for snook that shows you where you're going to want to um, target first, second, third, fourth, and fifth, uh, and sixth, and so on and so forth on the bridge with your flare hawk. So, you know, don't look at this video just uh, in isolation. Look at all these videos to help you learn how to catch more and bigger snook. Let's first start talking about the color of the jig. The color doesn't matter nearly as much as some other things, which I'll discuss in a minute. But since we do have this as the subject matter, my favorite color is this chartreuse and blue tail um, flare hawk. Now, this particular one uh, has like a bean head style or a boxer, I think it says boxer glove style, 1.5 ounce. Um, the ounces and how much it weighs really is going to depend on where you're going to fish it. If you're going to fish it in a you know heavy current, you know like Sebastian, you might need a three ounce. If you're going to fish it in a, what I'll call normal spot, ounce and a half, maybe two ounces. If it's going to be in a, a spot where there's hardly any current at all, uh, or if you want to run the lure higher, you know a one ounce uh, jig is is sufficient. However, the one thing you want to uniformly make sure you have is a strong hook. I always request uh, an 8 hook because when you're going to be pulling on these fish, you're going to be using heavy tackle and you're going to be in tight quarters and the fish is probably going to hit right next to the fenders. And if he pulls a foot of drag, he's going to get right back into the fenders. So you need an 8 hook. And the reason you need an 8 hook is you don't want it to straighten out. Um, 7.0 may work, but I wouldn't go anything lower than a 7.0. 8.0 is the way to go. This can um, take all the pressure uh, that you're going to give on that fish 99% um, of the time. Now, if you get a Goliath grouper and you know you got like a 100 pound braid, maybe the 8.0 will straighten out too. But this is probably all you're going to need is the 8.0. But if you get the 7.0, you know. That's up to you. Not do not use as much drag if you get the 7 I get these from hooked on jigs. You also can get them from a first light tackle on the internet. And um, you can also get them from a, a lot of guys just make these and sell them uh, on Facebook and, and other places. Um, so there's a lot of places where you can get these jigs. But um, I like this hook design and this jig head design, and I like these colors. And I'm always going to throw this color first. And before I switch colors, I'm going to switch to a swim bait or a shrimp jig or something else. It's probably not the color that's going to affect why you're getting the bite or why you're not getting the bite. However, since we are discussing color, my second favorite color is this white and blue um, same design same hook same everything else always make sure your hooks are sharp too because you know you're just probably going to get one or two bites maybe four or five and you want it to stick and you don't want it to throw out so make sure you got a sharp hook and you know you're going to be good all right now let's talk about the setup um, the setup, you know, you can use spinning or in my uh, situation, I like a bait caster. Um, I'm just used to bait casters. I can feel the line. I'm cranking with this hand and I hold the line with this hand. I can, I can feel any little taps by little fish. I can feel any swings and misses 
but I just like to be able to feel the line as I'm reeling it in, know if I'm hitting the bottom, know what's going on. I'm in contact constantly with the left hand because I crank with my right hand and the line. So I like the bait caster. It comes back to uh, when I was fishing shrimp jigs all the time and I was bouncing them off the bottom. You really need to know when they're hitting the bottom because if your jig's on the bottom, you know, you're in the right place, but you don't want to leave it there. You want to jerk it back up. I'll save that for another video. But anyway, that's that's my preference as a, as a bait caster. Now, what kind of bait caster or spinning reel is totally up to you, but you're going to want to have some heavy duty line. You're going to be catching these fish next to bridges, jetties, pylons, boat docks, all kinds of stuff, uh, spillways. So you're going to want to make sure you have heavy duty line. You're going to probably want to have at least 30 pound braid on your reel and you're going to want to have 80 pound um, for your um for your leader material i use 80 pound mono i do not use fluorocarbon it does not matter in a nighttime situation and yes we will be fishing these at nighttime you can fish them at dusk or dawn but or on a cloudy day but um 99 of the time you're going to get the bites at night uh not during the daytime yeah if you get them in the daytime then yeah put comments below and when and how many times you did that because i guarantee it's not always the situation uh, but for me i fish these at night dawn or dusk or low light situations um now a leader there's no use reinventing the wheel just get a giant spool if you're going to be doing this a lot of andy mono pink um and this is just regular Andy Mono. This is like a five-year supply of line. And this is all you'll need for a long, long time because you're only going to make, you know, four or five-foot liters out of this material. All right. Uh, this is my setup here, and I'll go into it in a little more detail in a second. But you're just going to want to tie the knot a uni to a uni knot rather just a regular uni you don't need a loop because as i'll discuss in a minute you know you're not going to be jerking this thing around trying to get it to jig up and down or do any kind of crazy thing like that you're just going to be reeling this straight in um 99.9 percent .9 of the time that's what i do i just reel it straight in don't give it any extra fancy up and down action. So uh, you're just going to want a standard uni knot um, to your to your jig. Now um, for the connection to your braid, um, you can do an FG knot if you're feeling like it, and you know how to do a good FG knot. But in this particular case, I just have a uni to uni. This is about uh, I think it's about 40 pound uh, braid and then this is my 80 pound mono leader uni to uni now for the length you're gonna want um, this nook mount is 32 inches so I got just a bit just about 36 inches that'll give you enough um, to be able to toss this thing around uh, you know pretty far if you use an fg knot you can have like five or six feet and you can cast it through your guides if you tie it properly um, and that's the other thing with the fg when you're deciding what you're going to do fg is not too easy to tie at night on a boat especially if it's windy so you know go with the uni to uni if you're doing it on the boat all right now once you picked out the spot where you want to cast your jig um, you want to toss it in and then of course you want to free spool it um, in this case you know with the lever the button on the bait caster until it hits the bottom and that's another reason I like to feel the line I have the line running through my fingers I'll know when it hits the bottom you can tell you know on a spinning wheel when it hits the bottom too but that's the signal you know you're going to want to feel uh, for when to start and then you of course engage the reel and then I like to reel it about like this pace you know, it all depends on the tide, but given the fact that, you know, let's say the tide's not screaming in, this is how I want to reel it, something like this. And then sometimes I'll stop, sometimes I'll start reeling it again, stop, 
reel it a little bit more give it a little bit of action but that's about <laughs> that's probably 10 percent of the time most of the time i'm just trying to reel it at this slow and steady pace i want the snook to be able to see it track it and then bite it so you know i don't want to be jerking it out of their mouth or anything and going oh, and jerking it up and down um that's not what i want i i just want to give them a nice target nice and slow that um, they think they can nail it and they will nail it you better be holding on because when they thump a, a flare hawk jig they're going to jerk the rod out of your hand believe me so you got to be holding on pretty good and be ready for that big thump that's what we all live for is that thump but uh yeah when they eat a flare hawk there's usually no missing it especially if it's a bigger fish anything slot or bigger it's going to not miss and it's going to grab your your hook and you're going to be ready to fight that fish all right let's discuss where you're going to want to throw these jigs and of course one of the main places that i throw a jig is at a bridge and you want to have a bridge that has good current um you want to you know factor in um is there bait going through there you know this time of year in the winter um you want to consider temperatures you know you might want to be a little closer to the ocean the water's a little warmer on the incoming tide from the ocean or you might want to be way back um, where it's warmer in the deeper water um inland so you know factor those kind of things in but ask around you know, if you talk to enough people, you'll find out where the hot bridges are for whatever particular time of year, you know, you're fishing. But, um, yeah, you got to just keep throwing to you get, you know, get it right. Well, all right, here's your typical bridge here. You got your lanes. This is a draw bridge. And you got your bridge tender right here. Um, and I, I discuss this more in detail on my anatomy of the bridge. But, you know, there's all these different spots you can um, position yourself and bring your your lure back to or your your jig in this particular case you know you want to try to cast up here and bring it down this way you want to cast up here and bring it this way you may want to position the boat out here and bring it this way because there might be around this fender light that's right there um, you may want to position the boat here and bring it down this way or if you're on the bridge the same deal applies you're going to want to try to bring it at the angle they're expecting you know in each one of these different quadrants and you can bring it against the current um if the tide's not too strong you know reel it against the current try it try everything until you get a bite you got to try a different depth you got to try a different speed all the variables that you can do with a jig are, are you know things that might get you bit you know, you might be going too slow. You might be going too fast. You might not be going deep enough. You know, you might be going um, too deep. You might want to be on the surface. You want to be, might be, want to be in the middle. Um, generally speaking, you know, you're going to want to spend most of the time near the bottom or just off the bottom. But that's not always the case. If they're hitting mullet on the top of a bridge, near a bridge light, you know, or a shadow line or something like that, you got to want to go fast, you know, and keep it up high in the water column. Um, if, especially if you see snook, you know, in the lights, they're, they're waiting for shrimp or mullet on the top. So that means go fast. Maybe use a lighter jig so you can, you know, so it won't sink so fast. Um, so those are the things you got to consider. Just keep trying all different things. Don't keep throwing it into the same spot using the same speed, using the same angle. Move to a different spot. Get a different angle. Um, let it go down to the bottom, you know, um, go low and slow, go low and fast, go high and fast, you know, all these different things, you know, and if none of that works, like stop it and then start it, you know, just use your imagination. But the one thing you don't have to do is you don't have to jerk it up and down off the bottom. Um, that's, that's a whole nother technique that, that I do use for shrimp jigs, but not for this, um, not for the flare hawk. Some people do it, but, you know, if you have never gotten bit before, just use the straight, slow, and low method uh, as your primary weapon. And then, you know, try these other variations of speed and depth that I've been talking about. All right. Where else do you want to use these flare hawks? Um, 
You can use them in the inlets, um, in the jetties. You know, you're going to want to bring it along the bottom on the inlet and uh, flow with the current. Um, you're not probably going to be able to go against the current in an inlet. But yeah, bring it along the bottom in the current. Um, and um, that's probably going to be your best bet. Um, depending on the, the inlet, you may want to bring it along the jetties. Um, tight to the jetties because most snook are using the jetties as structure you know for protection from from predators so yeah you might want to bring it along the jetties uh if you're able to to cast and bring it down the jetties off the tips of the jetties that's another spot you want to try um, you also want to use these at spillways that work great this is the one time they do work in the daytime when there's a lot of uh you know, current and a lot of water flow and the water coming out of the spillways is not that clear. So you can get away with throwing these in the daytime at a spillway and still get bit. You're going to probably want to throw it, you know, at, again, at various angles, whatever angle the fish are going to think that the bait fish are going to be coming out. That's the angle that you're going to replicate with your flare hawk. And uh, you're probably going to want to be near the bottom, especially if the current's going fast. The fish are going to be down near the bottom and shooting up for stuff that they see, you know, going over their heads. Uh, you probably want to throw it up in the, you know, stall that has the most or the gate that has the most water coming through it. But, you know, ask around, try a bunch of different things. Uh, maybe they're they're probably going to be just outside of the current, maybe, or they might be right in it. Depends how hungry they are. Um, so yeah, those are the different kinds of places you want to try. Lastly, I've never done this myself, but I've seen a lot of people post pictures of snook off the beach. Uh, and imagine they're near rocks or a jetty, uh, or an inlet or something like that, or known snook congregations and they cast them out. And I'm sure they're bringing them along the bottom in, in the sand, but yeah, these things work. Don't ask me how or why they work. I think they just see you know, um, silhouette going by and they, you know, just react quickly because they know it's not going to stick around and they whack it. So yeah, be ready to hold on and you be ready to, you know, set that hook because, uh, that fish is probably going to try to, uh, thump it as hard as he can. He's probably going to try to go right back to that structure and pull you in. So you better have your drag set tight and you better have that locked down and you better be ready to, you know, have the fish of your lifetime, uh, maybe, you know, yank the rod out of your hands or whatever. So be ready for that. Um, they're quite strong when they hit the, when they hit the jig and yeah, you want to pry them away from whatever structure they were on as fast and as quick as you can, because, you know, it's, it's really all or nothing, uh, with this kind of fishing. And, um, at least that's how I do it. You know, if you do it differently, then God bless you. But this is what works for me. Um, they're not going to shy away from your 80-pound leader, 100-pound leader, anything like that. Um, they're not going to shy away from your, you know, 50, 60, 80-pound braid. But, yeah, you know, you don't want to be breaking off a bunch of these fish using light tackle and then them swimming around with a bunch of these one-ounce jigs in their mouth. So, yeah, you know, you got to consider the fish uh, and the health aspect of the fish, too. You know, you don't want to um, get one bite in the nighttime that you're out there fishing and, you know, you break them off because you thought you could get away with 30-pound leader. You know, you're not going to get away with 30-pound leader uh, unless you're not near any kind of structure uh, or you find some stupid fish. But, yeah, you need that 80-pound. You need that heavy braid because uh, this is, you know, a whole different kind of fishing than flats fishing. This is not finesse fishing. This is macho man fishing. This is prying them away as fast as you can and hold on and see if the hook rips out or doesn't rip out. But yeah, this is what I like to do. And uh, if you try it enough, you're going to get addicted to it like me. Because uh, yeah, it's the best way to catch numbers of snook. The numbers of snook are always going to be inlets, bridges, and spillways. Those are your number one spots. You know, they could be anywhere in between, but they're always going to be at the inlets, the spillways, and, you know, the bridges, especially at nighttime. All right, I hope you learned something. Tight lines, Jake.